Hello, my name is Joanna if you're new here and today I'm going to talk about two books that deeply impacted me this past year, both by the same author and that author is John Williams. And the two books I have to talk about are Stoner and Augustus. And I wanted to talk about these two books side by side because they showcase the incredible range that John Williams has as a writer. And I normally focus on fantasy on my channel, but I do branch out now and then and I'm so glad I did for this author. So I started out with Stoner, I listened to the audiobook, and I picked this up because I was watching Chatting with Nuts in which Jimmy was trying to convince Alan to pick up the audiobook of this and he said it was free on Audible so I jumped on it and I'm so glad I did. I immediately fell in love with the way that John Williams writes, so much so that I contacted my mom and said you got to pick this up. So she did and we listened to this alongside each other and have been talking about it ever since because it is such an incredibly written story. But if you hear about the premise of this story, well, it doesn't sound like it's going to be that great because you open up the opening paragraph and it pretty much tells you right away. This is the story of a man named William Stoner who enters the University of Missouri in the year 1910. He ends up staying at that same university, getting his PhD there, and teaches there until his death in 1956. So from one perspective, you could say this is a very ordinary man who leads a very not remarkable life and from our American societal standards of success right now you might say he didn't lead the most successful life in his career and then the other perspective of success is home life, family life and there's questions as to whether he succeeds there as well. But at the same time as we might be quick to judge this character and by our definitions of what leading a meaningful successful life is, I think we need to question that in ourselves. And in fact, John Williams says in the beginning of this book in the forward, he says, I think he's a real hero. A lot of people who have read the novel think that Stoner had such a sad and bad life. I think he had a very good life. He had a better life than most people do certainly. He was doing what he wanted to do. He had some feeling for what he was doing. He had some sense of importance of the job he was doing. He was a witness to values that are important. I think that there is room for interpretation with this character, though I do think it is a common experience for people to read this book and think that Stoner is indifferent. There is room for thinking that, I think, and that he's very passive because he doesn't make the strong decisions you might want him to make at times in the story because he does encounter conflicts in his life. He encounters conflicts with the bureaucracy of university life. He encounters conflicts in his marriage and with his family. So I think that there are things there that he has struggles with, but at the same time, this is a character who seems fairly distanced from people. In fact, in the backdrop of this story, we have World War I, going into the Roaring Twenties, going into the Depression, but it doesn't feel like it ever deeply impacts or affects him, Stoner, in the way it does to even the people around him. It seems like there's a sense of isolation there in him or a sense of distance and also a yearning for connection and perhaps loneliness too, but there's also some room for contradiction and surprises along the way. I recently heard an interview with Steven Erickson, author of Malaz and Book of the Fallen, say that when he's writing good characters, he tries to consider characters having some level of contradiction about themselves because none of us are consistent 100% of the time. We have different conflicting influences in our lives. Maybe it's not good either to be consistent 100% of the time. And I do think that there are places in this story where this character will surprise you with what he does. Even though I just described this character as maybe not making the strongest decisions, as being a little bit detached, I still had to remind myself at times that this is in third person narration because I felt so close and connected to this character that it might as well have been in first person narration for me, which is a weird thing to say, but I really love the way that John Williams brought forth this perspective on loneliness and this perspective on meaningfulness and purpose and what it means to live with regret, what it means to love questioning marriage over time and what that means to us. And I'm just going to go ahead and read a passage that I thought was so beautifully written. And in full transparency, this was my mother's favorite passage, so I'm going to go ahead and share it here. He heard the silence of the winter night, and it seemed to him he felt the sounds that were absorbed by the intricate cellular being of the snow. 
Nothing moved upon the whiteness that seemed to pull at him to suck at his consciousness just as it pulled the sound from the air and buried it within a cold white softness. He felt himself pulled outward toward the whiteness which spread as far as he could see. He felt himself go out of the body that sat motionless before the window and he felt himself slip away and everything, the flat whiteness, the trees, the columns, the night, the stars, seemed incredibly tiny and far away as if they were dwindling to a nothingness. I feel like that passage captures a beautiful sense of longing and nothingness and emptiness. And I think anybody who's experienced the stillness of the night snow might have some of those same feelings come to mind or maybe not, maybe a different interpretation of that. But overall, I think it also brings into question, again, this is about the ordinary man, but what is ordinary? So I think it's a beautiful, beautifully written story. It's one that touched my heart. It's one that felt filled with longing and questioning. And I think even for a very short story, one thing my mother said is that this is a very cohesive story. And she said that's not easy to do as an author. Now, in contrast to Stoner, Augustus is very different. It's an epistolary format. We have multiple perspectives as we have multiple letters. And the beauty of an epistolary format is that we can cross time and distance in um, a strategic way. And I feel John Williams did that in this book. It doesn't follow the most linear timeline. We do go back and forth in time with these letters. And I think it was done to great effect to have some wonderful dramatic reveals along the way. Now, while Stoner is a very contained story about one character and it's very linear, Augustus is very grand. It's about a grand character. It's about the great Emperor Augustus who felt it was his destiny to change the world and you find out what that means to him. And like Stoner, there is actually a father-daughter relationship in both books, but the father-daughter relationship in Augustus is much more central to the story as Julia does have journal entries in this book Cleopatra does too, and her perspective informs the role women had in society at the time and the ways that they could express power or the limits they had in expressing power compared to men. And that is all related to some of the other challenges that Augustus faces with trying to pass or legislate laws against adultery. And so this goes into the theme of legislating virtue, whether you can actually succeed in doing that. And Alan did a fantastic video about that that you have to watch it was so good and he also talks um alan also talks in his video about the importance of philosophers and poets and the role they play in shaping our worldviews, our um, moral views and our cultural views so definitely check out alan's video for all of that but this book is packed with themes you have friendships you have betrayals you have loss and you also just have wonderful humor and interesting things here and there like for example one of my favorite letters was one in which the person writing the letter was talking about Horace at a dinner party telling or retelling Orpheus and Eurydice that story but he made it allegorical to what was happening in Rome at the time and what was happening with himself and I just thought it was so it was so cool I loved that so it was a fun book in that sense but it also felt very um, very grand, like I said. It had a lot of gravitas to it. It's written in a very formal writing style, much more formal than Stoner, but it fits that time period. I'm going to go ahead and read a quote from Augustus that I really enjoyed. The young man who does not know the future sees life as a kind of epic adventure, an odyssey through strange seas and unknown islands, where he will test and prove his powers and thereby discover his immortality. The man of middle years, who has lived the future that he once dreamed, sees life as a tragedy, for he has learned that his power, however great, will not prevail against those forces of accident and nature to which he gives the names of gods and has learned that he is mortal. But the man of age, if he plays his assigned role properly, must see life as a comedy. I think that that idea of letting go of ideals as you age is present in both Stoner and Augustus. I will say that there's also, by the way, a play of indifference that comes up in both stories as well. But I actually felt as though Augustus 
while being very grand, like I said, it felt to me a little cynical by the end. In a persuasive, convincing way, it felt as though, especially with the last letter by Augustus, like he was just unrelenting, John Williams through this character of Augustus, in telling the story he needed to tell. But it doesn't leave you feeling the most hopeful, at least it didn't for me. And we do arrive, as explained in this quote, of the idea of gods as accidents and nature rather than real forces of power. And so I just want to go ahead and say that about Augustus, but overall it was powerful. It was a powerful story and there were powerful moments of humility about humanity as well, about human characters in their frail moments, those who are trying to be powerful, and when they realize that they are failing. So I thought that it was just all beautifully done. It was an, an incredible story. And I'll just say as far as my reading experience, I did find it easy to listen to the audiobook of Stoner. Both are by the same narrator, by the way, if you listen to the audiobooks of the two. But for me, I couldn't quite absorb Augustus the same way via audiobook, so I did read it via ebook. And that was helpful, by the way, because the x-ray feature on Kindle, if you're like me and not the most knowledgeable when it comes to Roman history, you could pretty much highlight any name in Augustus and it'll give you a great wiki paragraph of that particular character if you just want some reference points here and there. There's always more to learn, of course. But overall, I just really enjoyed my time with both books, both works of fiction. They were both fantastic. And I think, again, this showcases John Williams and his range as a writer and what he was able to do with the contained, cohesive, linear slice of life story with Stoner, an English college professor who is maybe an ordinary man, versus Augustus, this grand, powerful figure and this epistolary format with multiple perspectives and so much at stake and war and culture and all of these different things. So I think it's just amazing to see, to contrast the two books anyway. One last thing before I forget is I found a fantastic editorial quote on Amazon um, from Financial Times that says, a novel of extraordinary range yet of extraordinary minuteness that manages never to sacrifice one quality for the other. And so that was said of a Augustus, but I feel that captures for me John Williams as a writer because neither of these books are very long. They're both pretty short actually, but they both pack a punch with what they have to offer. And I would love to hear from you. Have you read these two books? Are you planning to read these two books? Um, let me know in the comment section down below. Let me know which one was your favorite if you read the two. For me, Stoner won as far as my favorite just because it touches me in a slightly more personal way than Augustus, but I do love both books and I could see the case for Augustus being a favorite over Stoner. So anyway, that is all for now. Thank you again for watching and have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.